Hey, Very Shop, it's me, Georgia, and today I'm going to be going over some really fun gift ideas that you could literally give to anyone. Um, I'm going to give a couple people minutes to join in. Um, feel the sun on my skin. Mm. Um, so yeah, today we're going to talk about three different products. We're going to be talking about the Mass Riverine um, non-alcoholic spirit, which is delish. And I'm going to show you a little way that I like to prepare it. Um, then we're going to talk about the Cire Trudon. I'm definitely mispronouncing that candle, which I can literally smell from outside the box and it's a dream. You're going to love it. And lastly, we're going to talk about this beautiful Danish cutting board. I still have it in the packaging here, so I don't really want to take it out yet, but um, it's great. You're going to love that too. Um, actually, I'm going to start with this one, but I want to make sure the packaging is right on here. Still giving people some time. We're gonna sing until they join. Gonna sing until they join. Um, because, yeah, we can't do that. Okay. <laughs> Just this a little bit, about a beam. Okay, so the first item I want to talk about is the Skagarak softboard. And it is a freaking dream. Before I open it up, I just want everyone to take note. This is the packaging that it comes in. Super sleek. It's pretty light. And um, what's great about this is super easy to gift wrap. You don't need to go get a box for this. It's in a box already. Little wrapping paper, bow, you're done. Okay. So this is a really great um, product that comes from Denmark. And I was reading that Skagrak is actually like the strip between like where Denmark, Sweden, and Norway are. Um, I'm probably butchering that, but it's a Danish product. So it's kind of fun to know a little bit about that. Um, so inside, very simple. It's just the board and it comes with some little instructions, which are super helpful. Um, I was reading a little bit about them. So this is the board itself. Super sleek. I mean, wow. And it doubles as like a paddle in case you want to give someone a spanking. Just kidding. That's inappropriate. Or is it? I don't know. Kind of like it. So the board is really smooth. It's not like the bamboo bullshit you get at the grocery store that splinters. This is a beautiful board. And you can see like the detail on the inside is really smooth and pretty. Um, this is oak. And what's great about oak is that um, it contains tannins, which reduce bacterial growth, which is really great. Um, this is untreated, so you, you can clean it with soap or oil or any other like cleaning product that's suitable to wood, but know that with certain products, the color of the board will change. So what I like about this is it's got this, I mean, the classic like kind of Danish blonde wood look, Food is going to look incredible on this. Um, it's a great cheese board. I personally do not plan on cutting on this because it's so pretty that I'm going to want to use it, you know, for a presentation only. Like, it's not a, cut it, a, a board for, like, cutting cocktail lines, you know, or a board for, like, cutting meat on. This is, this is a presentation board, and that's what I really like about it. Or, again, a little spanking paddle. <laughs> um... So a little bit more about this. This is a soft board and um, it is designed based off of the American shaker movement, um, 
And that is why it has all these round edges. Even the ends are rounded. And the hole in the middle is actually designed so that you can hang the board up against the wall. So pretty cute. I love that aspect of it. Um, I am really looking forward to having this for the holidays because I love to entertain. And this is going to be so nice to be able to present things on um, cheeses, a little ramekin with olives you know something like that will be really nice and it, um i also like you know i have darker tables i don't know if you can see that now here um but i think contrasting woods actually look really beautiful together um i also think that this board looks really pretty just presented on top of your countertop maybe you have marble or slate um or maybe you have really ugly countertops and this is going to make them look prettier so uh love this cutting board and i'm very much looking forward to using it um I think all of y'all will enjoy using it as well. Um, maybe just for funsies. Um, oh, well, I should also mention that you don't want to put this in the dishwasher. Okay, again, this is more presentational. You don't. I, I don't want to cut on this board. I don't want to put this board in the dishwasher. I'm going to treat it very nicely. Probably just use water, a little bit of soap when I'm cleaning it. Nothing crazy. Um, but yeah. That's me. I might oil it, but I'm nervous. But I might, because um, I know that that helps with board preservation in general. So I might do that. Um, just for like comparison and color, this is the wood. It's blonde, and this is a seashell. My lighting right now is a bit yellow, but this is white. Okay, so this has in person, like the sun is shining right now, this is a bit yellow, but the photo online actually represents it very well. It is a blonder wood. It has like some light like, gray tones in it and a little bit of yellow in it and brown obviously, but it is, um, it's not quite as like, like a uh, Ikea blonde wood vibes as, as the lighting is making it look now. It is, um, it is a cooler tone as shown in the photo. Um, so yeah, this is the cutting board. You gotta get it. You're gonna love it. Comes in the great little thin box that you can wrap up. But a bean, but a boom. Recommend get that stuff. Next product. Um, so I'm gonna do a little accent now because why not? I am obsessed with this product. This is the Amass uh, Riverine non-alcoholic spirit, and it smells a lot like gin. Gin meets like some sort of Italian digestive. Um, the way that I like to prepare this, um, because it is uh, a bit intense, it's, I don't want to call it a concentrate, but you know, it's it's got very intense botanical flavors. Um, but I like to mix this with a little bit of uh, Lacroix or Lacroix, and um, sometimes just like a little squirt of um, like juice or lemon or something. In this case, I have a blood orange, uh, so I'll show you guys how I prepare that in a second. But first more about this company, Amass. I used to bartend and we would use their gin a lot. Um, it's delicious. It's, it's, it's the epitome of like a botanical spirit. So the fact that they came out with uh, a non-alcoholic version to me is really great. I have a lot of friends that don't drink and this would make a great gift to them. Uh, I got the package that comes in six bottles, which is, I believe, one of the options that Very Shop has. And what I like about that is that, you know, I can keep a couple for myself, but then they make beautiful Christmas gifts. I mean, guys, how beautiful is this bottle? It's it's glass, but it's matte glass. Almost looks like a ceramic, right? And it's this beautiful, very like soft olive green. Um, I keep touching it because I feel like my nails look kind of good against it. <laughs> um, and so let's talk a little bit about why it's botanical and what's in it. So I have their ingredients pulled up here. Um, and it's, it's the most natural thing, okay? So we've got water, juniper, coriander, orris root, angelica root, lemon peel, 
cardamom, sorrel, cucumber, apple, mint, parsley, sumac, rosemary, and thyme. And then it's got various other botanical extracts. But, you know, gin, um, gin is known for being like one of the more one of one of the most botanical spirits it has a bunch of like you know uh oils in it that it's made with i think that that's probably wrong but it's like the same idea as like an essential oil it's it's made with all of these extracts from different bo like botanical ingredients that make it um not necessarily have a bunch of like health properties but it makes it like a very like soothing, calming um, beverage to have. So that is why I personally really like it. I also think what's kind of a fun idea is you could easily mix this in with actual booze and it would also be really great, even though it's the whole point is that it doesn't have booze in it or whatever. So this bottle is um, 750 milliliters, um, typical bottle. It, I believe it's the same size as the, their gin. And it smells kind of like, it smells spicy. Like, like if you had, It smells like a spicier gin. Like it's got a little more oomph in it. Like a little bit of like. I'm trying to. Trying to find the right scent. But I can't figure it out. What, it, what it's telling me here is that. Um, like the traditional botanicals in gin are juniper, coriander, orris root. Um, which is essentially what it smells like and tastes like uh but instead of just being those classic botanics that you'll find in a normal gin this is more nuanced it's more sophisticated it has more um botanical elements in it that make it really its own sort of like health spirit thing um i feel like i'm getting a lot of glare in my eyes so i'm just gonna pop these babies on <laughs> so all right let's make a little drink shall we um i like to do a splash of this you can sort of see how much i have in there then i like to fill it up my cup like pretty much asmr <laughs> okay then um, sometimes I stir it, sometimes I don't. A little squirt of juice. Why not? I just got that all over my bathrobe. So that's exciting for me. Um, and yeah, I am wearing a bathrobe at 3 p.m. because I work from home and I just, you know, whatever. Um, it's so effing refreshing. Holy crap. Oh, this is like the kind of thing that you want to sip after you do a yoga class or like at a Sunday brunch when you're just like, I really am not trying to do the mimosas right now. Like this is the perfect drink. And um, I just think the bottle is really beautiful. Um, I will say if you are going to order the six pack and you plan on traveling with it, it's pretty heavy. I would not do that. I would maybe take one bottle with you or ship it to where you're going um, because the six pack was quite heavy. Um, the bottle itself is also like, it's like carrying a bottle of booze. You know what that feels like? It's heavy, thick glass. But it's so beautiful, and you could recycle it. Take you could peel the little labels off, and put a flower in here or something afterwards. Sometimes with beautiful bottles, I like to do that. I'm trying not to be a hoarder, but it's um, it can be difficult. There's so many beautiful bottles out there, and I love it. Um, I really hope someone watches this review and wants to sing and dance with me. Um, 
that also tasted botanical. But yeah, see, this is delicious. And, you know, there's so many different ways that you can prepare this drink. And other reasons why I like it is that it's not alcoholic. It's got 14 different botanicals in it. It's vegan. It has no added sugars or sweeteners. And it's gluten-free. All great things. Am I right? So, you know, it's Christmas. What do you do? Uh, you've got that one friend who, like, has everything. And they're really annoying and picky. And the, you can't give them chocolate. You can't give them cookies. You can't give them, you know, some Gouda because they're a freak. And uh, you're, this is a perfect botanical drink. It's, you know, it's guilt-free. And it's so beautiful. Honestly, you don't really have to wrap it at all. You could just throw a bow on there. Or freaking not. Just be like, Merry Christmas from me to you. Happy Hanukkah. I don't know. I'm just riffing here, people. Um, but yeah, I really like a mess. They've got really great. I know some of you are probably familiar with like they have soaps now and they have all this stuff. Um, and it's pretty, it's all their products are pretty great. Um, I think that, uh, well, you know, what else we can talk about? We can talk about, um, I want to read you guys what it says here on the tasting notes, because I think this might help with, uh, with explaining the taste. So, um, Basically, uh, the way they explain it here is nose, palate, and finish. So for the nose, they're saying when you smell it, it's like, which is very, definitely accurate. It's, it's a bright sumac that fades into like cool mint. And I smell that now really clearly. <laughs> um, for palate, it's citrus, sorrel, coriander forward, um, bringing out this like uh, vibrant, it says piquancy to start. Um, and then layered with like an earthy, mossy thing, which is also accurate because it doesn't taste like, like it tastes spicy. And then, yeah, at the end, it's got this like earthy, musky finish, if that makes any sense to you. Um, and then lastly, it says that the, the finishing, like, tastes, like, as you swallow, kind of the aftertaste, essentially, is, uh, is going to be more juniper and parsley forward um, with rosemary. So it's got more of an herbal finish. And I, 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 I taste all of that when I have it. So I feel like this is a great drink, you know, maybe post-workout or post a heavy meal. You want to have something refreshing that's going to settle your stomach. This is where it's at. So, cheers. Lastly, my friends, I would like to present to you the Cirelle Trudon Candle. A la Regio. Mm. Mm. This, okay, let's talk about freaking holiday packaging, my friends. You don't need to do Shiza with this. I mean, you could. You could wrap this bad boy up and then someone would unwrap it and then be like, oh my God, it's like the packaging itself is a gift because this box is so cute. I just want to give you a little, so the top it says, or this side it says Reggio. Um, and it's got this woman carrying a plate of clementines on her head. And you can already tell, I mean, this woman gets down. Look at that, the scarf and those glasses, she's gold. I mean, I want to be this woman, am I right? Then, um, here it's just got their like pretty signature labels and then here it says les belles matters i'm not pronouncing any of this right so um it's french not italian either so i don't know why i'm pretending to be italian when it's french <laughs> uh, so 
This candle is unreal. It smells delicious. Without even opening the box, I smell like citrus, like jasmine, and it's almost a little bit earthy, like a little bit of pine, but I'm also sitting next to this pine thing, so maybe I should get that away from me. Bye! Um, let's open her up. Oh, and then the, the top is beautiful as well. It's just got their classic, like, emblem on it. Me likey. Say, we're gonna open her up. We're gonna have a little sniff. It's gonna be great when I take a whiff. Oh, mm, delicious. Okay. Reggio. It is French candle, but I talk to you now in an Italian accent. It's very nice. Okay, so um, with the Reggio candle by Sirotron, I read to you a little thing about the candle, huh? Oh, this got a little bored, sorry. Um, so... The idea behind this candle is to be like Mediterranean themed. The reason why it's called Reggio, is it, which is Italian, um, is because it's embodying that part of the world, the Mediterranean coast. It's got the smell of clementine and jasmine coming in. It's so delicious. And they explain it here um, as having uh, okay, it says here, it's a vegetal triptych. Their fine perfumes naturally orchestrate fruity, woody, and floral fragrances. Reggio comes infused with a mandarin from Calabria. Tadin flirts with sandalwood from New Caledonia, while Madura blooms with Indian jasmine. Mm. A geographic odyssey. The collection travels back to the origins of rare perfumes. It delves into the rich hours of botanical discoveries and reveals the genesis of grand olfactory adventures. Like calling for faraway lands, a sense of absolute runs through this belles materies, which again I'm mispronouncing. Gatekeeper of these secret explorations, the night blue tinted glass wraps around the inspired essences. Let me show you what they mean by that. Mm. Ah, she pretty, no? Mm. You know, I'm gonna put this in like the most like visible place in my house because she's fancy and she'd be cute. That's how I. Sometimes hope people describe me. She fancy and she's cute and she smells good. If I'm lucky. <laughs> okay, so back to my reading. <clears throat> the gatekeeper of these secret explorations, the night blue tinted glass wraps around the inspired essences. The three absolute scents speak up in a contemporary manner. Les belles materies. Let materials be. Mm. Then it says some stuff in French, which I cannot read. Sorry. Um, so inside, it has this little protective layer, which all candles have that are nice. And this is a very nice candle. I feel like whoever watches this video is going to want to punch me in the face or be my best friend. I don't know. So another thing that I was reading about this candle is because she's so brassy, you want to make sure you burn her right. If I, if I, of course I need to get this freaking thing out of here. But I was reading, ah, there it is, comes out. So the inside is white. It's the circle of candles. And it smells so delicious. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. This is gonna burn so nice. Okay, what it was saying to me, back to important details, was that when you burn it, 
you want to let the whole like front part melt down. I guess so that it burns evenly rather than just getting like a hole in there. You know how sometimes when you burn a candle, it just like burns where the wick is and it like sinks. So I guess to avoid that, you want to let the whole thing burn. They said also that you don't want to burn it more for, than like three hours. Well, I can read you a little more because it's all right here and they put it out so nicely. Okay, so. <clears throat> In order to get the most out of your candle, burn it until the entire surface of the candle melts. To preserve the fragrance, do not burn your candle for more than three hours at a time during the first third of the candle and one to two hours at a time during the remaining. Do not leave candle burning unattended. No, 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 no. Listen, I can tell you. The other day I was having a bit of a romp in the bed. Oh, and what do you know, my fire alarm goes off. And I was like, well, I knew I was having some fun. It was getting rather hot, but I didn't expect the fire alarm to go off. Well, no, I'm a dingus. I left my candle unattended right above my pillow, and the whole thing set up in flames. It was dreadful. Then I had to throw my pillow out. Complete waste of money and time, and totally killed the vibe. Anyway. Do not leave candle burning unattended. Do not set in a draft. Keep away from children. You know, pesky little children. They can get their little mitts in there. They'll ruin the whole thing. Or sort of dribbling wax all over your house or something. It's just awful. I mean, really, don't. Keep it away from the children. Right. <clears throat> Do not set in a draft. Keep away from children, curtains, and pets. Mm. Should the wick require centering, gently readjust to correct the position when the wax is still molten. Right, so let's break down what that means. If your wick of the candle should, um, you know, do something stupid that you don't want it to, like tilt itself far to the side or sort of turning down or somehow move to the left field, all you want to do is, while the wax is still a bit warm and soft in the center, is to take the tip of your finger and blip, push it to where you want it. Don't use too much force or you may break the wick. Right. It says, uh, allow the candle to solidify before relighting. So wait till it gets hard again. Don't relight it while it's still drippy, waxy. You know what I mean, right? Um, okay. Should any black smoke appear, trim the wick. That's good to know. I didn't know that. It should be clean and no longer than six millimeters at all times. If you don't use the American system of masks, I cannot help you. Google six millimeters. Lastly, always protect the table or the surface on which the candle rests with a coaster or a plate, for example. I don't know what I will use yet, but probably a coaster because, no, well, I don't want to use the plate. I think that would be rather ugly. I'm so obsessed with how this looks and smells. I wish you could capture the blue better. It's quite nice. Okay, and the very last thing that it says is do not burn your candle all the way down. Always leave at least five millimeters of non-molten wax at the bottom. So, in other words, once you get to that five millimeters, looks like you'll have to get another ciré trouvant. Now, I would like this, but I have to go right away after this. Anyway, um, I will start making an accent now, even though I'm sure you all loved that. And I am going to put this back. It's been an absolute delight working with you today. And I hope that you found some great gifts in here. I mean, you can literally give these to anyone who doesn't like a candle, who doesn't like a cutting board, um, or not a cutting board, but a presentational cheese board. And who doesn't like a non-alcoholic bevy to have after dinner? I don't know. Crazy people wouldn't like any of those things. So, 
This has been real. I'm Georgia Nicholas at 3 p.m. in the bathrobe. And nobody watched this, but you will later. And I hope you enjoyed it. Trying to keep it fresh. Trying to keep it cool. It's your girl, Jean Nizzle, up in the hizang. Audi. If I can remember how to. Okay, now. Bye.